everyone, Alex Man here, and welcome back to another round of The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD. Last time, well, my boy had a birthday party. That turned out badly because we got this tunic that no one can see except for those who are very honest with themselves. Then, our sister got kidnapped, went to the Forsaken Fortress, got flung into the ocean, picked up by this talking boat, and told us to go save the day. We grabbed the pearl by saving a dragon, and we also got this literally you know, the wind waker with us, so that now we can control the winds. But we have nothing. We have something we can use with something, but we have nothing to control the winds with. And now we're gonna continue on with our adventure, so that now we can see about going somewhere else. We were told by Valu uh, to tell to talk to this thing. There appears to be markings that indicate specific directions. Well, when we just pull out a Wind Waker here, we get to learn our first song of the game. And I go up, left, I messed up. There we go. You've learned the wind melody! Woo! Woo, that's a nice breeze of wind there! Man, that was a lot. Hmm, that's a mighty nice uh, breeze. Huh? Wah! Oh, oh, the name's Zephos. I'm the god of winds. So you're the new wind maker, are you? Uh, I guess. Great, great. For beginner, you've got a nice wind sense about you. I like you, kid. That tune you just picked up, well, it gives you the control over the direction of the wind blows. Depending on how it's used, a wind can be a good thing, or a very bad thing. You want an example of it being a bad thing, you should see my brother. It saddens me to say that my brother, Cyclos, is miffed about his monument here being broken, and now he spends his time creating cyclones to torment people with. So if you encounter any cyclones at sea, Chastise my brother for me, will you? And that is my request to you. Bye bye! Wait, what the. Uh, fine. We'll have to deal with that. That's a, that's a particular character we're going to be meeting up with later. We can't deal with him now, but if we do see cyclones in the distance, then yes, we'll have a problem with that. But anyway, we got to talk to a boat. It would seem that God has sent those monsters to this place. But that would mean there's no time to lose. We must depart once for the place where your next pearl sleeps. We sail to the south. But in order to do so, we're going to, in order to actually enter his boat, we need to send the wind to a proper direction. We conduct the wind's wind, Griclim. So now we get this map up here that we can pinpoint our location where we need to go. We need to play south first, but we're not going to be going south just yet. We have to be south so that the wind can be so we can get in the boat. The wind is blowing to the south quickly. Swim beside me and press A to climb aboard. We must depart once for the place where the next pearl lies sleeping. We would do that, King. We're well, the King of Red Lions, but we need to go back somewhere. Let's uh, do this. After you've conducted the uh, song once, uh, you will be indicated by this. So we'll go west. We're going to be heading back to Windfall Island right now, because now how this game acts and everything, there's a lot of stuff you can un now you can do now at Windfall. Like I mentioned before, that, um, last session, oop. Oi! Oi there, small fry! We off! Huh? I don't know where you got your meats on that sea chart you got there, but it looks like you got it pretty much nothing but seas thrown on it. It's pathetic, in fact. It's most an insult you call that thing a sea chart, if you ask me. What's the matter, small fry? I'm just trying to be nice here. I'm telling you that you gotta get a problem, and you do. Don't give me that stupefied look. It makes you look like you ought to be in diapers. Just listen, okay? I'm here to teach you what I know about this island. So open up your sea chart and make it snappy. Um, sure. Just don't soak it. Hacha! And we get a map of the island. You can do this. This is optional. You don't have to do this, but it will help out if you do if you just go out on your way for it. There's a real particular cave to so the backside of here, this Dragon Roost Island. 
Yeah, real peculiar. But I doubt anyone will be able to see it, small fry, unless you manage to sprout wings and fly, that is. Because you won't be getting there any otherwise. And that's all I can teach you, small fry. But I'll do this for you. Since I'm feeling so generous, I'll send word to all my brethren living near the islands of the Great Sea. Good bunch of fish. If you see a fish leaping out of the water when you sail near an island, sail it up to it. Spread bait on the water surface. Trust me, it's good advice, fry. See, the bait process allows you to get short of the island, along with any info that might be of use. I highly recommend a habit of doing so. So you're definitely going to need a reliable sea chart to find your search things out at sea. I can't emphasize enough that, Fry. You'll need a well-drawn chart. If you don't get a chart for every island you come across, it'll just become a bigger hassle for you later on. Now don't say I did anything for you, Fry. Ah! Oi, you there, you King Red Lion guy thing. That's it. I repaid my debt. I'm done. You take care of the rest. So now we have this fish that will now appear on all the islands. So now we can fill out the sea chart as we see fit. Again, it is not rec it's um, it's not required. But if you're going for 100%, this might be something you might be interested in. So bear that in mind. So we're going to be heading out to uh, Paul Print Isle because there is a... A particular heart piece we can get there. Now I'm not going after 100% the entire game, no. But I do want to grab the piece of heart here because it might be useful for us later on. If I can remember where that island is, it's off to the south here. And it's interesting that this. I think originally they wanted to have more islands or bigger islands to boot in this, but I think because of the limitations of the GameCube, they can only put one island per region. Which really saddens to me, because there's just, just a, I will say this right now, sailing on the ocean is slow. Like I mentioned last session that there was a, there's basically, there's not much of the wind of sorts, and you have to constantly change the wind. Oh, hello. Ah! Oh, mighty fine boat, you got that bub! You must be searching for treasure on the sea floor too, aren't you? Ha ha ha, you won't get any from us, Bob, not likely. Let me ask you something real quick. Who wanders around a fishless sea? Uh, I saw a fish the other just a few minutes ago. Maybe you can go ask him. I'll tell you who, Bub. Only pirates, monsters, and treasure hunters like ourselves may have my other things that I've never heard of. Mm hmm. You know, with all the weak island dwellers who never leave the shores, I'm amazed to see such a tiny little guy out here. I, I like your style, Bub. I feel like I've known you my whole life. So, hey, Bub, tell you what. Of one treasure hunter to another, I'll give you this. You'll definitely be needing it if you want the haul of treasure. Come on, take it. I won't take a no for an answer. I'll also take one a nay, no, nope, or nah. Just grab it. You get a treasure chart from this guy. You only get one from him, so bear that in mind. Again, any treasure charts you do find will be on your gamepad, so you can open up and find treasure. Opening up these will, um, will basically have a big, huge glowing light that will show up on the overworld. So if you get close to it, it'll disappear, but if you do uh, use your grappling hook you got from Dragon Roost Island, then you will have the ability to haul treasure up. And you will need to haul up treasure because it is technically required to beat the game. But, getting optional treasures, there is one particular treasure for every quadrant of the land, of the sea. So bear that in mind. We're going to go in here real quick. This is not required by any sort, but this is Paul Print Isle. This island has a few rupees, a lot of choo-choos in here. So there is a fish, that fish we saw earlier. He says that there's a particular person who makes potions. He comes to this island to essentially to stock up on raw materials to make his potions. Chew jelly in on this world is what causes the what allows you to make those potions that he's mentioned. And they just have red choo-choos. I think there's... I don't think there's any green choo-choos in here. I think that changes depending after you first find them, I think. But there are... There are multiple different colors of choo-choos. There's the red ones here, which... If you use their jelly, if you pick it up or it drops... You can use that to make uh, life potions. Or you can use the green ones, which we haven't seen yet. We might see it this session. But... The green ones will also will make will have its essence is able to make uh, magic potions, which you might need one or two depending on your situation, of course. But there are two treasure chests in this place. So unfortunately, we can't get the others because we don't have bombs yet, and bombs are not going to be coming for a little bit while longer. So, but there is a piece of heart in here, 
And that's what we're going for. So let's grab these things over here. Again, I probably will not be getting any potions in this game because there is a particularly powerful potion uh, that you can get pretty much halfway through, there, through this game. And I think it's much more better, or at least better, than what any potion you can actually manage. There are, there are multiple, like, I didn't mention this earlier, but there are multiple different colors of choo-choos. I said earlier, there's red and there's green. But there's also the blue one. Blue ones are very rare. There's about, well, I think, maybe 15 of them in the entire world. You defeat them all, and you bring all their chew jelly, the blue variety, over to them, over to the potion man, and he will allow, he'll basically make a blue potion, which allows you to, uh, to have both life and magic restore, just like in previous Zelda games. So bear that in mind if you do so. But, knowing how broken this game is, and after uh, a play session I had a little while back, um, that there are, there's an item in this game that you want to pick up, alongside, if you use that, that item alongside the most powerful uh, potion in the game, you can basically break this game in half. <laughs> and I will be showing that combination off once we get there. But we're now getting here. It's nighttime. And it's a good thing it's actually turning nighttime here now because a particular something or rather starts here on this island. We know about that guy who gave us this sale, right? Well, there is a particular auction that happens. And uh, one of the items is a very particular item that you really do want. But it is a little bit of expensive hike. So you want to make sure you have the money required to do it. So I would recommend getting at least 300, 400 rupees at the start of this, if you so choose. But we're going to talk to this guy first. Oh! No, that's not it. That's just not it. And the problem is, even though that's not it, this isn't either. Oh dear, pardon me, pardon me, guy. I was just so fully and wholly absorbed in my dancing that I didn't even notice that old you standing next there. I am taught. I love dancing more than I love these three meals a day. You will come to know me as the world's karmic dancer extraordinaire. <laughs> Ready, guy? A one, a two, a one, a two. Say, guy, you know what I was just reminded of? Long ago, I met this delightful little guy who performed the most dazzling magic dance. I dance that turned night into day, right before my very eyes. I can't, I can't remember those fan, that famous dance moves, but I just can't seem to integrate that rhythm down. Do you think you know that rhythm, guy? So you want to pull up, you want to pull up your Wind Waker and let it hum here for about a couple times. Huh? Cha cha cha, huh cha cha. That's that's it. That's the rhythm I've been trying to recall. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel it, guy. So this guy also teaches you a song you can use. So it's left, right, and down. So you type in left. Oh, it's, oh, it's, there we go. It's right, left, down. If you do this, you learn basically the song of passing. That's it. That's it. And it's Perfect! I'm perfect! Now let the sun shine on! Hey, what's the matter? Nothing happened! Nothing at all! Why? Maybe because you may be adding a little bit of a dance that's kind of ruining it, but we now have the song of passing. This allows us to pass the time of day and night, so if you need to get anywhere that needs to be acquiring of the day or the night cycle, now you can do it with ease. In later Zelda games, they got rid of this. I have no idea why. Because, you know, Orcarina of Time had it, with the Song of the Sun. But with that, so that's not too bad, I guess, because it's not really required in the story. But this is where we're going to go to first. This is our auction place. It's housed by the guy that gave us this sale. Well, now. Good evening. Hmm. Yes, yes. I read out the first hour of the first floor of this mansion in order to run a mighty auction. And tonight, tonight's auction is about to begin. Oh dear me, is it ever? Now, it is indeed an auction, but I like to describe it in more simple terms. It is a competition of the highest order. Oh yes. 
It is a competition to see who can get the item that is being auctioned. Can you outbeat everyone else? Do you have the courage and the funnage? Oh, the drama. Ah, but what's this, dear me? Do I detect a hint of curiosity? I do believe I do. Fortunately, we welcome bidders of all ages, both kids and adults. To legalize gambling, apparently, for young kids. Hmm. So yes, so tell me, would you like to participate in this auction? Uh, absolutely. Really? Dear me, really? Now, you are not completely fine with me not explaining the auction to you. Am I correct on this? I am completely not fine. Oh, there, my dear. Allow me to explain. Hmm. Once the auction begins, you must shrilly tap A repeatedly so you can earn the right to bid. Oh, the tapping, the excitement. Yes, yes. When you want to bid, tap A. As you do, your gauge will gradually build up. Once your gauge is full, your chance to bid has finally come. Oh, dear me, yes. Now, when you bid, you name, you're you naming the price. You'll be willing to pay for the item. Let's just call it a chance to show off your wealth. Flaunt it, my dear. Of course, if you fell a bidder tried to buy the item from underneath you by raising the bid, you can always raise the bid in return. Indeed, this produces much excitement. The dramatic back and forth goes until time runs out, at which at one point the person who has the highest bid gets the sublime honor of purchasing the item. The auction only lasts one minute, not counting the time people spend talking. But do not worry, I will show you how much time remains when you make your bid. Now, you understand? I understand. Very well, let's begin immediately. No time to dawdle, the auction is afoot. On your toes, on your toes. This can be random. And I'm hoping I get the item right. If not, we'll have to repeat this process until we get it. Yes, yes, yes. First, let me thank you all bargain-loving people for joining us this evening. Dear me, what a turn out. The auction's about to begin, yes. And what do you suppose will pop up as our item of our evening? Oh, dear me, I'm excited. I can't stop sniffing. The calm before the auction the storm awaits. My nose run. Let's get the auction. There it is. The sale. Well, I got it the first try. Okay, we got this. <laughs> all right. Oh, dear me, what a prize. At least the sense of it's is over. But all the drama aside, you should know this is extremely rare to even get a chance to own a fabulous item like this. It's priceless, quite dear. Very valuable. Yes, yes. Listen well, for I do not lie. Let the auction begin at 100 rupees. That's why I said you should have a lot of rupees to start off with this. And begin. You have to hit the A button to get your right to bid. Now, there's something he does not tell you. If you spend 10% higher than what the current bid is, you could actually you can actually stun them. So I'm going to bid up to 224. About double their bid, basically. Oh, dearest me! Incredible! The drama! Everyone struck speech with my, my boy's bid! What is with this kid? And just how much allowance does he get that he want, I wonder? When this happens, they all be stunned for at least 10 seconds. So that leads... So you want to build up your meter as best you can. So you can re-bid again and basically keep them stunned. So I'm going to hold off a little bit here. Alright, they're just about... Let's see that. 10 seconds have passed. I'm going to go up 10 rubbers again. And now we're going to get re-stunned once again. Ah, how did you get stuck competing with this annoying little rich boy? Drat it! <laughs> so this is the sale we want. I want this. You can go for other things. There's, you know, two treasure charts, a heart piece. Um, you can also get a... Uh, I'm going to reset the timer for them. I know this is a little bit much, but we'll be raking the money in no time. Oh, I didn't do enough. I did do enough. Come on. I do not want to lose this. Alright, 20 seconds. 80. Oh dear me! The boy was 180 rupees. Now they're stunned again. I'm going to have to do it one more time after they aren't, while they're not stunned. That way I can get the minimal time allowed for this. I'm going to tell you that 10 seconds left. There we go. 9 seconds. 200 rupees, baby. 201. They're stunned. I've got this. I am basically guaranteed at this point. But I will increase my bid. Just so I can have it. So I have a guarantee it when it happens. And sold! Here's the injunction. Tonight's fabulous swift sale goes to my boy of 201 rupees. Dear me, let's just say congratulations. We got 
The swift sail! Thanks to this expert sail making craftsmanship, your ship can now sail faster than ever! Ooh, ooh, hold on. Ow! Ow. I stumbled upon myself. <laughs> My bad. Ah, and what's better? Whatever you use it, a favorable wind always will be at your back. No need to manually change wind direction. Voyaging will now be more efficient. My dear, how incredible that such a youngster walked away for the prize. I've never seen such a fat wallet. That kid was a bidding machine right up to the end. But now then, on to business. For the lucky ones out there, and yes, yes, for those not so lucky ones, let's just say thank you for your participation. I must bring the night's auction to an end. Dear me, such excitement. Dear people, thank you very much. So we don't have, that's all we're going to be doing for the auction for this. But now we have the swift sail. So that means we don't have to use the Winds Requiem mostly at all while sailing. That's great. That's awesome. That's why I stumbled upon my uh, charging cord for the tablet there just a moment ago, but that's fine. But, but anyway, now, we're going to be sailing off quite fast. Uh, that can be random. That was lucky that I was able to get it on the first night. That usually doesn't happen most often than not. So, <clears throat> All right, King. Let's see. Let's see how we can do this. Sail off. Let's go, baby. Huzzah! We're off. Now we have to sail this way before we get into before we can go south. So we have to make it back to Dragon Loose Island. So, with that said, let's uh, be off.